All right, in this video, we are going to create an hourglass. In my case, not the prettiest one for uh, by any means, but definitely I'm going to give you the, the, the stuff behind it, the logic and the math and the coding to get this stuff to work correctly. Um, here's the hourglass. So we got a little flow coming out here, and it's draining and filling up. And then we can just use this little button over here to reset that thing. So um, that's all that is. Now there's a lot of different things going on inside of here. We got some clips, we got some number global variables, we got some color global variables, uh, on off switch, um, quite a few things going on. Now if you're just getting into KOWP, this is gonna be a little bit overwhelming, but the more you play around with this app, the more you're going to realize if you do a lot of, of the dirty work with the coding and globals at the beginning, it prevents you from having to go back and say at the end, dang, I should have created a global for this so I can quickly move it around or I can quickly size it. Let me show you what I mean. So I have several number global variables and add these if you'd like, but the size, notice I can adjust the size of this stuff and everything stays together because there are all these pieces, quite a few of these pieces are completely different separate parts of each other. So if you wanna move all these things around at one time, or change their size, you know, apply some globals there. So a number global variable, I have it maxed out at 720, uh, minimum at zero, but then we couldn't see a freaking thing. So we wouldn't want to put it at zero, would we? Um, a, a color global variable, you know, some of you, y'all know this stuff, but I just want to kind of go through it for my beginners as well. Um, we got blue sand. Uh, we can, let me change this like to a red or something like that. That way we can see the difference between the sand and the body. The time, that's how long it's going to take for this sand to completely drain. I have it maxed out at 600. You can adjust these numbers to whatever you want, but take this number here and divide by 10. That's how many seconds it's going to take. So 600 corresponds to 60 seconds. Um, so if I put it here around roughly 300, okay, there's 297, but 300 will be 30 seconds. Let me just press this button here. Let me go to full screen too. Why the heck not? All right, now if I play this, you're gonna see the flow come out, but it's gonna take a second for the sand to actually start showing, and that's because of the way I have it clipped. But as you can see, it is draining, and this is uh, starting to fill up. So, you know, that's the time it takes, adjustable. Uh, On-off switch, that's what's actually going to trigger this button, which triggers these animations. Up, down, left, right, check this out. So, you know, we can move everything up, down, we can move everything to the left and to the right. The body color, we can make that whatever we want. Why not make it a green? So we got the body color. Uh, what else we got going on here? Body thickness. Um, that's the actual frame, I guess you could say, to this hourglass. I have it 1 to 20. So whatever you want to do there. You're going to need some of these to hide a few pieces um, when we go to do the flow. Now, flow thickness, let me uh, make this 20. I'm going to make my flow time a little bit longer too. All right, so notice the flow is real thick right now. That's this number here, flow. That's flow thickness. And then the flow time, let me reset my animation. Um, you may notice this, uh, the flow's coming out kind of slow. Well, that's the flow time. So if I adjust this number down here to like three, it's gonna fly out. Watch this, boom. So that's the flow time. That's what I call flow at least. And these are all the globals that I have to create this piece that we can quickly customize and move around and resize to our liking. The items. I'm going to go through these in a different order than the way I have them layered here. Let's start with the uh, sand top. Sand top. All right, the sand top, everything that I have, okay, sand top's inside of an overlap group, and all I have in there is a square. All right, its position is at the top, but what I have this thing set up for, so for sand top, I have its position set to the left, right. Notice this number did not change. And then the offset, the Y offset, I have it set to the up, down. Notice that number did not change. This is what's gonna help us use those number sliders to move things around. Now, inside of this overlap group sand top, I have a square. I have its size set to size. Notice that number did not change. I didn't change anything else in here with the exception of the color. You know, that's where I want to apply the color. Um, that was that global variable for the sand color. And that's it for um, this overlap group in terms of what we have inside of it. However, for animation, 
we're gonna go over to formula. Even though I have an on off switch, we want this thing to reset when the switch is off. So if my on off switch that I call GV go, if it's on, that means if it's equal to one, we want to move the animation forward. If it's off or otherwise, we want to reset. That way it just kind of resets back. And I don't know if you noticed that, but when I was doing the animation, when I would cut that switch off by pressing that button, it would just kind of go back and be full at the top again, and the bottom was completely empty. Um, of course, you can apply some animations to do those transitions back and forth, but I, I think it's just fine doing the reset. A quick reset, and that way you can restart your hourglass again. Um, what else do I have inside of here? Ease, normal, uh, anchor, oh, very important. Module bottom for this one. That way it's going to, you know, scale what do I have? Scale out vertically, and it's going to do it from the module bottom. So that's why it's going down across this bottom of this square. So really it's this square that we see here, but we don't really see a square because I have a clip applied. And to show you that further, I think it is worthwhile for me to show you that. So let me back out of here real quick. Let me go to sand top, which is the one I'm showing you. I'm just going to slide this up. That way we can see this actual square that we have going on here. Now, if I apply this animation again, as you can see, it is a square and it is going to be draining. This is this red square that you see here. And as you can see, the square is animating because I have this thing scale out vertical, module bottom, and then the duration applied GV time. That way we can have the time set on how long it takes it to drain from the top. All right, now as you can see here, it looks like it's not animating correctly, but I bet if I reset it, let's redo this now and look at it. So again, I'm talking about this square right here. So this one's draining, and then I have another square that we're gonna talk about right here in a moment. That's gonna be the sand bottom. So really, this is the same square down here at the bottom, except we have some different ways to position it. And uh, as you can see here, this square is, we don't really wanna see a square, we wanna see that triangle. So i tell you what, before we look at the sand bottom, I think I've showed you everything there for sand top. Let me come back and apply this or put this right here beneath clip top because here's what clip top is going to do. Clip top is just a shape. I have its, it's a triangle. Its width and height are both the size, GV size. I have it rotated 90 degrees. That way this triangle is pointing down, which you can't even really see the triangle because I have this set as clip next module. It's clipping that sand top square that I just showed you a moment ago. But let me take this off real quick. Let me go to none. And now this is really the triangle that I have going on here. All right. That triangle, if we apply to clip next module, it don't show you any color because its sole purpose is to clip that sand top. And if you recall a moment ago, I had a red square here, but since I've positioned this beneath that clip right there, it's going to take that triangle and it's going to clip that square. Therefore, we only see the actual triangle piece as the actual square is draining, if that makes sense. So we're going to do something very similar for uh, the bottom part. Let's go to sand bottom. It's still the same square. Uh, same size. Do I have anything else going on in here? Whoops, I did not want to do that. Don't want to apply any curves to my corners. Uh, the color, same thing there, just color. Let me back out and go to its position. Now what we're going to have to do here, just like sand top, we had the left right. That's going to allow you to slide this thing left and right and keep everything uniform. However, since we have this all this stuff anchored at the top, we need to actually apply code here. We want to do the GV up down, but then we have to apply GV size. And the reason why we have to apply this to this code, but we did not do it to the sand top is because we have to take this square and we don't want the square to be right here with the top square. So we have to actually apply the size of that square to shift it down that additionally that many further units or whatever. Um, let, me, let me show you that one more time here. Let me go back to sand top. Let me go to its position. And I have this one as just left, right, and I have this one here as up, down. So that's this top square that you can't even see right now, which is this one being clipped. So to put the bottom one, we don't we would have to do this up, down, plus we have to move this bottom square to here, which is really just the GV size to move it down to this spot. Kind of tricky, but that's the math that's going on there for us to achieve that sand bottom position. So let me show you that code one more time. GV up down plus GV size. That's going to put the bottom square beneath that sand top square. 
All right. Some other things inside of here, animation, a formula again, it's the same formula. If GV go equals one, we want to move it forward. Otherwise, we want to reset it. However, we do have some things a little bit different here. Scale out vertical, inverted module bottom. Therefore, it's going to invert this animation. So you will see this stuff scaling out from the bottom, but it's inverted of what this scale out bottom was for the sand top. This takes a lot of practice to get used to. I, I mean, every time I mess with these animations, I have to tinker around with these settings to get them to work the way I want to. So, you know, I'm sitting here telling you this stuff, but trust me, it's not like I can get this right on the first try. I definitely have to practice and try different settings, um, mess around with the ease. But in this case, inverted is what worked for me to achieve it or to achieve that effect of it looking this little triangle's filling up. Um, duration is okay. I don't want to. Do that duration is going to be the uh, what GV time yeah all right so notice that says 300 that's something to point out I've mentioned it in many tutorials but I'm sure you haven't seen all of them but uh, this is the actual time it's going to take which is 30 seconds and sometimes this does not match up with the actual duration you see there all right so that's sand bottom well just like with the sand top it was a square the sand bottom is also a square let me take the sand bottom and let me just slide this up for a second to show you that it is a square see the red square but when we apply this square beneath clip bottom it's going to clip it into that triangle that's a good way to actually see that clip getting applied well what is clip bottom clip bottom is a triangle gv size gv size rotate this guy 270 so it's pointing upward but let me show you its fx clip next module let me set it to none real quick and now you can't see a daggone thing because I have the red square in front of it. Watch this. Let me go to clip bottom. Let me slide this to right here. And notice, well, as long as I'm somewhere uh, beneath this square, it's going to show up in front. That's the actual triangle. But we want this triangle that we called clip bottom. I'm going to put it right here, which is technically putting it behind this square. However, when we go to that clip bottom, we go to FX and we go to clip next module, it's going to clip that square. And as you can see now, that square looks like a red triangle. So we had those two clips going on, clip top, clip bottom, sand bottom. I have two buttons, really it's just one button, but I have one button set to, um, you can apply whatever you want, I just have a rotating thing. But uh, this one here, its animation is not rotated. I have this one just set to fade out. And basically I'm saying, hey, um, when this tr thing gets triggered, and really this is what I have to touch to trigger this animation, I want part of it to fade out. So let me show you what I'm talking about. This one here that you see is this actual stop button. But when I actually press it, it's going to fade out, which is going to bring in the other button that's rotating. So that's a little, you know, has nothing to do with the hourglass really. But, you know, if you want something to animate, like a button, Maybe you, maybe you might want to create two buttons and have one fade out and something else fade in to make it actually look like it's one button, but we got two different animations going on. So let me show you the other piece to that. Um, this is going to be... Okay, I have them both called stop button. My bad. But nonetheless, this one, okay, that stop button is this one right here. That's that stop button. I need to rename these, but it'll be all right for right now since I'm talking uh, talking you through it. This other button, it's the same thing, but notice this little square here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of like pulsating because this is the one I actually have looping. I got two global or two uh, animations. Global switch, I want this one to fade in. So, And the reason why I want this thing to fade in because behind here is the same type of font icon, but it's rotating. I have it rotate inverted. And this is a loop. So it's constantly going to do that. Let me show you which button that actually is. It's not the one you see here. It is this one because it's fading in and it's looping and rotating inverted. So this is the actual, I guess we could say, go button or whatever. But when we actually press this, it's actually stopping the animation. So, I mean, you know, which one do you want to call stop? Which one do you want to call go? But I have... Two buttons, which really just represent one button. And the way I'm triggering this stuff, we touch. If we touch these buttons, notice I have toggle global switch go. And you can just adjust that right there like so. And I have that applied to both of these buttons. 
So make sure you apply that same touch to both of these buttons. That way if one's faded out, you can still touch the other one to toggle that global switch. All right, there's still some things I haven't talked to you about yet. I haven't forgot about flow. I'm gonna come back to flow in a minute. Let's go ahead and come down here to body. Now body is a little bit tricky in order to get everything to move around. So notice I have one thing called the whole screen and basically this is a clear rectangle which is set to the entire width of my screen and it's also set to the entire height of my screen. Now I had this color set to completely transparent because all this is is something to simulate a full size of my screen and that way when I apply my padding to the body pieces, these green pieces you see here, everything stays uniform. That was the trick to getting this stuff to move correctly um, in regards to the green body frames that you see here. So top is a triangle, GV size, GV size, let me go to rotate 90, um, it's paint, I have it set to stroke, I have it set to like, what is this thing, body, yeah, body, and then stroke, I ask body thickness, body thick. Let's notice those things did not change. Position anchored at the top. And nothing's changed there in regards to padding. However, the position of this entire body, the entire thing, that piece where I have, remember I mentioned the rectangle, what has all these other pieces? The position of this thing is going to be GV left, right. And this one here is up, down. So that's moving the actual whole piece. But really what is truly moving and keeping everything uniform is this, I think of it as moving this entire rectangle. That's the entire size of a screen. And then the pieces that I put inside of it, since they're going to be smaller, such as the top and the bottom. Let's look at this one now. This one's a little bit tricky. Uh, rotate 270 on that triangle, GV size, GV size. The paint, apply those same globals as before. But its position, we do have to apply some top padding to this thing. And the top padding is going to be GV size. Because if I take this away, let me take that away for a second. Notice that's this piece. Well, I want that to move um, in unison. I'm going to make it all uniform. So that's why if I apply GV size, because technically, if I don't apply any top padding, it's going to be right there. Well, I want to move it down the distance that this other piece is. And with this other piece here, this triangle, the top green triangle that you see here, its size was related to GV size. So if I come down here and apply some top padding, it's going to move the top part down GV size. And notice it did it automatically because I already had that code typed in there from before. I hope that makes sense. So we got two triangles. You may have thought before I had just a rectangle here and just like two straight lines, but what I actually have going on is a triangle, a triangle, and then I have two rectangles over here. So let me go ahead and show you those right now. And I just call these two things shape. Um, which one is this? I don't know. <laughs> but it's either this one or this one. Um, width, this is where I have it set to body thickness. So if I set that to body thick, notice it did not change. What do I have its height set to? GV size times two. Since we have two triangles, this triangle's GV size, this triangle's GV size, well this thing needs to be GV size, GV size. So GV size times two will give you that effect there. Its position, okay, this must be this one right here because it's got some left padding. That left padding is going to be what? Which one of those is that going to be? How about GV size? Boom, it does not change anything. If I take this global off, notice that's this piece here, and I want it to be somewhere roughly in there, give or take a little bit, but if I apply that GV size to this thing, it's going to be exactly where I want it to be to give it, um, not the prettiest looking hourglass, but it gives me the effect that I want. So this is a big tutorial on getting number global variables to work correctly to allow you to resize, move things around, and all that stuff. I've already kind of gone over the, the basic animations for the hourglass, but you know why not blabber on some more about number global variables in this tutorial. So then back into body, one more piece here is going to be that part, and that's going to be this shape here. So we're talking about this one. Again, the same type of globals uh, for the rectangle, paint. I don't know if I mentioned paint while I go for this one, but this one is going to be body. And position here is going to be some right padding. So instead of us moving this uh, piece here, got moved this way, we're talking about moving this one. So notice if I take this global away, 
it's this rectangle here and we want to bump this sucker on over here to this side to get it to work perfectly every time I'm going to apply a number global there and I already had the GB size alright so that's the body I think that's everything there what about the only piece I haven't showed you is flow so flow is going to be just our overlap group with a rectangle in it I have its animation set to scale out vertical I have it set to inverted and here's the formula if GV go equals one I want the animation to move forward otherwise I want it to move back and all this is let me make sure I show you everything else too um, scale out vertical inverted from the module top and then the duration here is going to be GV flow time that I showed you back at the beginning of this tutorial alright so all these things can be adjusted from within your globals a little bit of grunt work on the forend but on the back end trust me the more you mess around with this app if you go ahead and take care of your globals as you're making these things um, many times I've created things and I was like dang I should have put a global on all this stuff so I can move it all around and make it look like it's one piece instead of 10 or 12 different pieces like you see here so this rectangle here I have its width set to I think it's flow yeah that did not change its height is going to be GV size therefore it's going to drop this size link that I applied to uh, my triangles my squares all those things that you saw going on earlier I hope that makes sense what else do we have here paint you can apply what do I have to that I think just color yeah the same color as the sand um, and as you can see it is all right what else do we need to show here did I show you the animation for that I think I did did I, sh I can't remember because there's so much so much stuff going on yeah I do remember showing you that GV flow time on the actual flow itself um, I think that is it but again going through all those uh, crazy globals by us applying those codes that we applied I think I've showed you everything that I need to show you here um, our time piece we can make it last shorter um, where do we want it to be at put it up here at the top see since I had everything anchored at the top and I was applying those codes to move things left right up and down everything does move accordingly um, but yeah I think that's it um, so you know a lot of stuff going on really did you have to do all of this for this particular piece no because of the fact that technically it, all you had to do was do two triangles and had this flow thing going on but I think it was a worth a good time for me to show you a lot of number number global variable applications and there you have it that's how you can make an hourglass in KOWP and in my case not the prettiest one but um, I hope it gives you some ideas on how you can make it your own and that's it for this video I hope it helped